So you know, let's talk about what happens after Rafa. So Israel has vowed they're going to go in. By all indicators, that's going to happen sometime in the next couple of weeks in all likelihood. Yeah, and it's probably going to take a few weeks for Israel to finish up whatever operations they're doing in Rafa. At that point, the likelihood is long-term military control of the Gaza Strip, including counterinsurgency operations. You move from a large-scale offensive operations that are already doing this, and they move toward more sort of traditional counterinsurgency operations. The difficulty for, for Israel, obviously, is that Israel compared Hamas to ISIS. Hamas is actually not like ISIS in the sense that ISIS was an outside force that took territory that did not have tremendous domestic support for it. That is not true in the Gaza Strip. Hamas has tremendous domestic support. Huge numbers of civilians were involved in October 7th itself. The, the ability to radical, it's a radicalized population. How do you perform counterinsurgency operations with a highly radicalized civilian population, that population was radicalized before October 7th. Yeah, I think you you uniquely understand uh, the misapplication of the world on counterinsurgency to the war against Hamas and Gaza. Um, it wasn't a counterinsurgency. It was a, yes, they were terrorists who had an army, who had a political apparatus, who had all the institutional elements, who had a de facto state, basically, and built a military. How do you then conduct once you remove Hamas, which it has to be done, and most people acknowledge you have to destroy Hamas. Now, then you get into the day after. How do you permit another Hamas? You know, maybe they call themselves something different from one. You never give them sanctuary like they were given. They were given Gaza in 15 years ago, and they built billions of dollars to build this military challenge that no military has faced in the history of military. Nobody's ever faced what, what the IDF had faced in Gaza. How do you prevent that from happening is you have to create a different security paradigm. You might be able to use like the successful counterinsurgency campaigns of the past where you do the clear bill or clear hold and build, right? You create small, small neighborhoods and you assign different power structures in, that will keep those areas secure, working with them. You give yourself freedom of movement in the area. That is a tried and true counterinsurgency, but you have to remove the cancer first. No, you can't fight a counterinsurgency against the ruling government. That's that's by definition not a counterinsurgency. But yes, how do they go? What 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 does this look like after they destroy Hamas? There is no after unless you first destroy Hamas. Then the IDF will have to play a role in creating this new security environment, um, helping with setting up these gated communities, basically identifying different power structures who aren't terrorists, like tribal leaders or whatever it may be. So there's a, there is a clear path, yes, but it will be a an immense challenge, like you said, even the reconciliation process where, yes, you might have to reconcile with you know, some organizations that were terrorists and maybe they decide not to be terrorists. But that's also a part of this whole counterinsurgency theory is that there are reconcilable people. Well, that is Colonel John Spencer, who, of course, is the chair of Urban Warfare Studies at the Modern War Institute at West Point. Colonel, really appreciate your time and your insight. Thanks so much, Ben.